Well, uh, welcome everybody to the Critics Corner. I'm Andrew Branca with the Walks at Sun, and I'm here with my friend, colleague, and fellow movie aficionado and movie lover, Mr. David Dunn with South Lake Style Magazine. How's it going in your neighborhood there? It's it's going pretty well, Andy. How how how's it going in your neighborhood? Well, good. I, I see we both each have uh, twin mugs here. Holy crow! That was fully not intentional. Yeah, we have our we're, we're rocking our uh, uh, um, you know uh, uh, shorty short, mugs. Short horn alone there, man. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I applaud you. I think yours is much cleaner than mine, but it literally is. But you know, we're journalists. We don't know nothing about cleanliness anyway. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, I'm excited for today. You know why? I can tell why. I'm yeah, very excited. It's uh, you either love this guy or you hate this guy or you're kind of eh. I happen to be a huge fanboy of Mr. Nicolas Cage. Um, I grew up watching his movies. I've watched his bad movies. I've watched his eh movies, and I've watched his real good movie. And this guy has gone on a roller coaster ride of a career. Ups, downs. He basically does any movie that comes across his desk, signs a contract, and there's Nicolas Cage in a movie about spam. I mean, yep. that, that that's Nicolas Cage's career in... Uh, in a nutshell, right there. Um, he's done a lot of good movies, a lot of bad movies, a lot of like, holy crap, I can't believe you did that movie. Um, but I like him nevertheless. Um, he's kind of one of those people that just endures kind of like cockroaches after a nuclear war. Nicholas Cage will still be around. I, I, I think it's, it's fair to uh, um, categorize uh, Nicholas Cage as a cockroach. Um, because it doesn't matter how many bad movies this guy puts out, he always seems to survive. <laughs> and, and, and you don't know what level he's going to go to next. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He just keeps he keeps escalating like nuclear war tensions. Yeah, I think his yeah. new, his new movie that's coming out is called Pig, and it's about some guy with a truffle hunting pig. I don't know much more than that, uh, but. I will probably watch it because it's him and it's interesting watching the train wreck sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that, and that's true. Uh, poor Mr. Cage does have plenty of train wrecks um, from a uh, uh, ghost rider to um, uh, ghost rider spirit of vengeance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're not kidding about being a big Nicholas Cage fan because whenever you pitch this idea to me for this show, you literally blew up my phone with like one Nicholas Cage gift after the other. Holy crow. Where do you find all these gifts? I don't know. In the words of Nicholas Cage. If nothing else, I'm just excited we're finally doing this episode. So I don't have to get another Nicholas Cage gift for the rest oh, of my life. It doesn't end after there, man. You will get it one. Better, it better. It better. It <laughs> better bloody end. Or I'll blow up my own Nicholas Cage gifts. And, and I'll, before, I'll the Mando on your account. <laughs> before we get into it, I will say this, and you'll probably hate me for it, but I don't care. I still would have loved to have seen Nicholas Cage as Superman. So it's funny you mentioned that because he did portray Superman in Teen Titans Go, the movie. That's true, but I mean, live action version of Superman. I would have nope, loved to have fine. seen that. He is perfectly fine being an animated Superman for Teen Titans Go, which is the worst rendition of the Teen Titans ever. He perfectly fits in that category. But, yes. Yeah. Uh, Google Nicolas Cage Superman. There's a photo of him actually being fitted for a Superman suit if you're so inclined to see it. No, don't do it. That you, 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 you have more to live for. There's more to life than Nicolas Cage's Superman suit. Don't punish yourself with well, this. Look, look, look right up here, and here's a picture of it. I can't do what I want to do on camera right now. I'm just saying <laughs> that right now. <laughs> Viewers, I'm sorry. Andy is punishing you. This is very cruel and callous behavior from him. You deserve better than this. Okay, well, moving on here. <laughs> um, we are going to uh, 
Uh, we are going to give you our top three Nick Cage films, and I'm also going to throw in a few honorable mentions. These span yeah, the... Yeah. the uh, there's a lot of Nicolas Cage movies to choose from, so we picked the three that we like the best. Absolutely. And would actually recommend going to see. Absolutely. Yeah, these are these are the better Nicolas Cage movies. Don't worry about bad Nicolas Cage. Don't worry about Superman Nicolas Cage. These are the Nicolas Cage movies you should check out. These are his best moments, hands down. So I'm going to start. Uh, I'm, we're going to go from three to one. So we're going to go from, you go to from, you know, the third best to the to the best, which will be fake. So I'm going to start. I would say my third favorite Nicolas Cage movie is the uh, 2000 movie, 2005 movie, Lord of War. I was a big fan of that. I'm still a big fan of that. And every time it comes on TV, you know, I have to watch it. It's uh, basically, it talks about a arms dealer that is being chased around the globe by the Interpol agent, uh, uh, played by Ethan Hawke. Jared Leto's in this as well. And it talks about his life, his family, and how the world of him being an international arms deal clashes with his the life he's trying to make for himself personally, and it really doesn't seem to work out for him on one side or another. So I really liked this movie. I thought it was great when it came out and just thought it was unique. And who else but a guy uh, you get for this but Nicolas Cage? I mean, he's just that kind of plucky kind of, you know, guy, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I definitely think... um, uh uh Nicolas Cage makes sense for a role like that and um you know I'm a huge fan of uh Andrew Nichol um I really loved his uh, earlier film Gattaca um so I've wanted to see more of his uh filmography since then unfortunately I have not seen Lord of War yet um that is one of the few Nick Cage titles that uh, um skipped my radar while I was binging for this episode um so uh but maybe i'll check that out uh next maybe it's, it, it's, it, it's worth it i mean it, it's definitely a good flick uh i like it that so yeah. that's that's my that's my number three and uh what, what do you what do you, what's your uh third favorite nick cage film so my third favorite nicholas cage film uh it would have been my number one favorite if the third act wasn't complete garbage um, and that is the um, 1997 John Woo action thriller, Face Off. Uh, face Off. <laughs> face Off. Um, Nicolas Cage uh, co-stars in this, in this movie alongside John Travolta. Basically, um, Nicolas Cage plays a, a, a gangster uh, by the name of Caster Troy, uh, whereas John Travolta plays an FBI agent named Sean Archer. Um, and it's basically this uh, cat and mouse thriller uh, starring these, you know, two guys. But with an interesting premise, basically, long story short, um, as the movie's title suggests, uh, face off. They literally switch uh, uh, faces. They switch bodies um, <coughs> to, you know, infiltrate the other's organization. And it's a really interesting setup. Like um, Nicolas Cage, whether he's portraying Caster Troy or Sean Archer, um, he he really embodies the duality of both himself and John Travolta very well. And likewise with John Travolta embodying his characteristics as well. They just do a brilliant job mirroring each other in this movie. And they just, it it carries forward with uh, um, surprisingly uh, convincing fashion. Uh, And, just having those dynamics bouncing off each other. Uh, it's a great pair. It's uh, a great dynamic. It's great chemistry. They really propel, um, you know, uh, the thrills of this movie forward. Um, like I said earlier, the one thing that drags this movie down um, is the third act. While the first two acts of this movie really do a great job at building up the tension, the suspense, the, you know, the, the, the mm-hmm. out of the body experience of this movie, the third act is just a straight up generic action fest that I'm like, you had such a great pe- premise and two amazing actors uh, uh, carrying this premise forward. And you waste the third act on generic explosions, uh, fight sequences and chase sequences. Like, 
give me a break. It completely squanders the rest of this movie's potential. But outside of John Woo's shortcomings as a filmmaker, uh, John Travolta is great in the movie. Nicolas Cage is great in the movie. And in terms of crazier Nick Cage performances, this is definitely one of those movies where it makes more sense to be this, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, crazy. It definitely fits Nick Cage's uh, energy and hype very, very well. Oh, yeah. John Woo does, definitely has a lot of shortcomings as a director. I will agree with you on that. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we could do a whole episode on John Woo shortcomings as a director, and it would be very entertaining. Um, I would say my number two Nicolas Cage film is the uh, one, it came out in 2000. Uh, it's the uh, remake of Gone in 60 Seconds. You have Nick Cage, Angelina Jolie, and the, uh, Gianni Rigsby in this movie. I like this movie. Even if you're not a car person, it's just, it's plucky. It's, it, it's a fun movie. It's what you go to the movies to be entertained. There's a great, there's a cr- car chases, cards jumping over, <laughs> over, over uh, ramp trucks into the air on a bridge. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> you have over the top villains who are just, insanely just cheesy and bad. Uh, then you have the noble redeeming quality of the bad guy car thief turning out good and, you know, with a heart of gold who's, doing, who's stealing, but for the right reasons. Uh, you know, it's basically the premise is uh, Nick Cage is a master car thief. He has to come back in out of retirement to save his brother's life and steal 50 cars with his crew uh, in one night to save his brother's life who owes money to a very shady British dude. Um, Which, that's basically the entire movie. You know, stealing cars, it's it's great. And so, for for the car lovers, there's a lot of classics in there. That's pretty awesome. Um, are Are there plot holes in this movie? Yeah, enough to drive 50 cars through. But I don't care. It's a fun movie, and there's some great moments in it, and you laugh, and it's just, it's very entertaining. So basically, it's Fast and Furious, but good. Don't even, don't even associate Fast and Furious with that movie. <laughs> the first two Fast and Furious movies are good. The rest, garbage. Oh, my gosh. I mean, no disagreement there. If you want to hear you know, action, over the top, plot holes, it, it sounds like you're describing a Fast and Furious movie. No, no, it's, it's no. There, there's no, there's no Vin Diesel in it saying we're family. <laughs> no, there's just Nick Cage in there saying we're family. <laughs> hey, I at least like Nick Cage. At least Nick Cage has done some good movies. He's not Dominic Toretto. For like two, Vin Diesel's done good movies too. Excuse you. Yeah, like three. Just like Nick Cage. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, (laughs) I I I I have no rebuttal for that. (laughs) Good. I'm glad you don't, because it's true. (laughs) Um, I just like Nick Cage better. Huh? I just like Nick Cage better. So that's fair. That's entirely your opinion, and your opinion is valid, uh, except when it isn't. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it goes for you, my friend. <laughs> I have not seen uh, 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 Gone in 60 Seconds, another one that has evaded my radar. Um, but yeah, Nick Cage in a good action movie, I'm here for it. Um, that's what I saw Face Off being so uh, entirely fair. Maybe I'll check it out in the future. Yeah, um, great movie. Awesome. My number two is uh, <laughs> it's kind of an unusual pick, but. Uh, unusual kind of fits Nicolas Cage's uh, 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 filmography. So I, I think it, it fits like a glove for him. Uh, it is actually uh, the first movie that kind of uh, uh, set his name on the map a little bit. It is the uh, uh, 1987 uh, uh, comedy film, oh, Raising wow. Arizona. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> this movie is wild man with a capital w i l d uh and interestingly enough uh the coen brothers second film i didn't realize that until i watched the movie and i didn't realize uh, that either wow yeah so and and it, it it fits 
it fits Nicolas Cage perfectly, and it fits the Coen Brothers perfectly. I'm just, uh, glad, I'm just glad you didn't say The Wicker Man. That's, <laughs> that's a creepy, weird movie that he's in. <laughs> Nicolas Cage stars as a uh, 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 High McDonough, who is um, a, a novice criminal. He basically uh, uh, robs from a bunch of convenience stores, and he gets keep keeps getting thrown in jail every single time. But as he keeps getting thrown in jail every single time, he meets this beautiful, you know, uh, doughy eyed uh, uh, female cop who they end up wedding. Um, they try to have children, but then they realize that, um, you know, they can't have children. So in an effort to have their own family, um, you know, high is basically end up being coerced to steal a child from a family of quintuplets. Uh, they're like, oh, they won't miss this one. <laughs> and they try to have their own little surrogate family. And if that sounds wild, wacky, and crazy, and over-the-top obnoxious, that's because it is. The movie is just insane in every way that it can be. But at the heart of it is also this really sweet and endearing story about um, this couple, this dysfunctional couple trying to come together um, Nicholas Cage is a woefully unequipped man who is trying his best to be um, the best husband, the best father uh, um, for um, his wife and for his uh, newfound family. Uh, Baby Arizona is adorable in the movie. I loved him throughout the picture. Um, Nick Cage was, is the perfect idiot in this movie. Anything that can go wrong with this character does go wrong. Um, and yeah, it's just a great movie. It's uh, um, really, really funny. Uh, it's really slapstick. It's really absurd, but it really works for this kind of movie. And Nick Cage, as always, lends an energy that just makes the movie feel so accurate. So, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, lively. Uh, he, he really is kind of the driving force of this movie and he does a great job. Uh, keeping up the energy forward and in the first act of the movie andy you made a cameo appearance <laughs> I, I was so shocked one of the police officers taking notes to the investigation wow I it forgot. looks like you literally it is you it is literally you i was like how yeah i didn't how tell you about my, my moonlighting acting career there you know that i do on the side so i guess but it it, it blew me away i was like wow Nicholas Cage is a great actor in this movie, and Andy's a great actor in this movie. I didn't even know you acted, so good uh, job there, buddy. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure to work with such a an amazing talent. I'm going to have to post that to Facebook. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> well, I think you know what my uh, my number one Nick Cage movie is. I think I've assumed. I don't know for sure. I'm going to wait till you, you reveal. Yeah, it. let me reveal it here. It's the uh, uh, it's the uh, and. Before I reveal it, there's also going to be some interesting uh, new projects that he's doing that you're going to just laugh your butt off that I find very, very funny. Okay. My uh, number one uh, film is the 1996 movie directed by Michael Bay featuring Sean Connery, Ed Harris, and Nick Cage. It's uh, The Rock. I love this movie. Oh, my gosh. I When I was a kid, I would... I would sneak up. We had a copy of it on VHS that we recorded off television. My parents were so cheap growing up that instead of, you know, paying the man for a VHS tape, we tape it off a of TV. So I'd, I'd get up early when no one was around and I'd watch it Saturday mornings. It was great. It was a great way to kick off your early morning with Nick Cage. You have, you have, you have, you know, you have Ed Harris, who's reading a group of renegade Marines that take over The Rock, which is a former jail in San Francisco. You have Nick Cage, who's an FBI chemical weapons specialist, who's employed to stop Ed Harris, who has missiles with this deadly toxin gas. And then you have Sean Connery, Who's a former inmate of The Rock? Who's a was a British spy or something that got caught and imprisoned? Who's mad at the world, but he's been forced into help resolve the situation 
on the island in the middle of San Francisco Bay. I love this movie on so many levels. It is, it is a great movie. You have car chases, you have gunfire, you have just insane action, you have insane, just weird dialogue that's just funny. You have a guy that gets killed with a old air conditioning unit and it severs his head and his legs start to move. Like, And Nick Cage makes a comment, says to Sean Connery, he says, are you, you going to stop, stop that? And he says, what, kill him again? I'm like, that's so funny. Oh my gosh, I love that. This is great. There, there's everything. And Nick Cage totals a Ferrari. Need I say more? Um, I definitely don't disagree. The movie is very, very fun. Um, it's very high energy. It's very exciting. It's very thrilling. Uh, it, it, it is interesting that the mo- the the villain Ed Harris has a, a, a provocative and uh, interesting and relatable, you know, motivation. So I thought that was very well done. Uh, Nicholas Cage and Sean Connery's uh, chemistry was excellent. Um, and yeah, the overall premise of the film, uh, uh, the tension keep richening up over and over and over again. Uh, I definitely think it's one of Michael Bay's better movies. I do feel like it falls into the same trap that Face Off does, which is yeah. at one point of the third act, it just it gets ridiculous, like just oh, straight yeah. up ridiculous. But to be fair, Michael Bay's entire filmography is ridiculous. And so is uh, Nicolas Cage's. Well, so, you, you know The Rock used to be an old Civil War fort. That's <laughs> great. Well, maybe after done, we can go by the gift shop, but right now I want some rockets. Yeah, it's 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 so much fun. It's It does go on a little long, but I do enjoy the movie for what it is. It definitely is one of Michael Bay's better movies. Uh, the Rock is actually one of my honorable mentions, so nice job on that. Yeah. Um, my number one is radically different from yours. Okay. Very radically different. While okay. yours is high octane, high energy, ridiculous, and a lot of fun. Mine is a lot more grounded, a lot more serious, a lot more realistic, a lot more dramatic, and uh, a lot more sobering in its subject matter. And that is um, the 1995 uh, drama film, uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Ooh, um, good leaving, yeah, leaving Las Vegas, man. Nicholas Cage stars as um, a man named Ben Anderson, who literally travels to Las Vegas to drink himself to death. It is about a livid, raging alcoholic, um, literally just drinking as like breathing of this guy. And it co-stars uh, Elizabeth Shue as um this uh, uh prostitute that um falls in love with ben and ben falls in love with her and it's it's this tragic love story so to speak and several things impressed me about this movie one um the director mike figgis um didn't uh, uh have permits for a lot of the streets that they filmed on so a lot of the scenes you see in the movie where they are just walking through las vegas it's occurring naturally. Like they're just out in the open uh, engaging as two people, two lonely souls in Las Vegas. So that brought a level of authenticity to the film. I thought was really, really good. But then Nick Cage um, was equal parts manic, uh, um, uh, uh, crazy, unhinged, um, depressive, sad, um, joyful, uh, uh, elated. um, And, and just, uh, uh hollow like he he covered so many emotions in this movie that really captures the life and the loss of his character um i just stood there at the end of this movie feeling so hollow inside like something was just ripped out of me savagely um and that's his character he does a great job just bringing you inward into uh, his character's struggle, his, you know, uh, um, his fears, his uh, uh, regrets, uh, literally just consuming him from the inside out. And it's, it's such a heartbreaking portrait of what 
uh, um, addiction can do, what, what life it robs out of a man. Um, I definitely recommend, I definitely recommend people see it. I warn people to see it because it's so it's hard. For me. And it's very hard to watch. And especially given the fact that, you know, someone in my family uh, not too long ago uh, also was deeply affected from alcoholism. It's just, it's very hard to watch. But if you do have the strength to watch it, if you do have the ability to watch it, if you are uh, brave enough to venture forward and watch this movie, definitely watch it. Definitely uh, give yourself the chance to experience it. You will be totally amazed by uh, Nicolas Cage's amazing, amazing Oscar winning performance here. Definitely. A few of my honorable mentions that, you know, um, the 2013 uh, movie Frozen Ground, which is really good, where he plays a Alaskan police detective, one of his better, more modern movies. That's actually very good. John Cusack's in that. I would also say um, it, the 1994 film, It Could Happen to You, which Bridget Fonda is one that. He plays a cop that wins the lotto and sp splits the winnings with a waitress, which is Bridget Fonda, mm -hmm. which is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Con Air, uh, the 1997 movie, which uh, John Malkovich is in that. You got to love Dave Chappelle. John Cusack's also in that. It's a great movie. Um, there was one more, and uh, um, Honeymoon of Vegas, which is also really good from 1992 with Nick Gage. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, uh, my list is, uh, of honorable mentions is a little shorter. As I mentioned, uh, uh, The Rock was on there. Um, National Treasure definitely has to be on there. Yep. Um, knowing, uh, I'm putting Knowing on there, while one. the third act was also really stupid. I thought he was very good in the movie, and the movie had a very interesting subject matter. Uh, Kick-Ass is a very welcome return to form for uh, Nicolas Cage, and he plays uh, uh, Big Daddy in there beautifully. Uh, just this gritty Batman-ass character. So, so good. And uh, surprisingly, many people uh, may not know this, uh, I'm also doing an honorable mention for Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Yep. For those who don't know, he voices uh, Spider-Man Noir in this movie. And I, th I think, I, I personally argue it is his best uh, uh, voice acting uh, um, uh, role yet. Definitely well, better than his voice acting role as Superman, for sure. Well, <laughs> and speaking of weird uh, Nick Cage roles, you know, what was the one uh, miniseries on Amazon that everybody watched during the pandemic? Got a guess? Tiger King. Yep. He's doing an, uh, according to IMDb, he's doing an untitled mini series. It's called Untitled Joe Exotic Project. It's perfect for him. It's yeah. <laughs> I saw I that. Hear... I was like, wow. <laughs> I did hear he was doing that last year. Uh, I am curious to see what happens out of it. But since it's Nick Cage, I'm not expecting a whole lot. Uh, they, they say it's in pre-production right now, so I'm very curious. I will watch that just for the pure hilarity that is Joe Exotic and Nick Cage. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> it's saying that there's eight episodes, so I'm I'm intrigued. Should be interesting for sure. I'm intrigued. Uh <laughs> well, I think that's going to do it for today's edition of the Critics Corner. So if you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, uh, shoot us up on social email, uh, social media, give us an email, let us know. So y'all take care and you have a great weekend. Y'all have a great weekend.